So from standing, start to shift the weight from foot to foot and give yourself permission and space to allow the lifted foot to adjust its positioning, right? Trusting that um, if you're not thinking and you're just allowing, the feet are gonna find their way to the optimal support base for you. And then equal weight in both feet. Pause for a moment, start to rock forward and back. And as you rock forward, notice how the toes grip. This is actually really good. It turns on the transverse arch of the foot between the big toe and the pinky. And then start to notice the sensation as you rock back. You might feel a little more strength in the back line of the body, namely the erector spinae. Keep the big toe anchored as you rock back, otherwise you'll actually fall backwards. <laughs> we don't want that. And then let the rocks get smaller and smaller until there's equal weight in the ball of the foot and the heel. And pause there. Start to bend the knees as you scoop the air up, reaching back into chair pose. And then shift the weight forward, coming onto tiptoe, sweep the arms back, letting the whole front of the body open. Take a couple of these pulses. You can sync it with your breath. Doesn't matter which is which, just let the breath guide the movement and use your exhale to feel a sense of connection and integration, spaciousness. And the next time you come onto tiptoes, Play with going for a walk towards the front of your mat. And then set the heels down and let your awareness drop into your feet, into your footprints. Shift the weight into the left foot. Bend the left knee a little bit and float the right foot so you're in a single leg balance. Anchor the left foot down and try to neutralize the pelvis and the spine like we've been practicing. I really like to lift through the right heel here to turn my hamstring on so my hip flexors don't do the work. Um, so you can flex the foot and drive the heel up a little. Notice what that does for the back of the right leg. And then get bouncy in the left leg. Get really springy. And keeping that bounce going, start to step the right foot back without losing the springiness. So you'll probably be in a pretty short position. I'll give you, great. Keep both knees bent, back toes are down but the heels lifted. Grab a big bowl with your arms <laughs> and start to spiral to the left, dropping the right knee slightly as you spiral for atlas twist. And then shift the weight into the left foot, float the right foot just like we pro practiced before. And let's play between those two shapes, exhaling to spiral into the twist and then inhaling to float into the single-legged single balance. If the transition is a lot for you, you can take several bounces and then you can transition. Or if it feels really good and you like the work that's happening in the left leg, you can get a little springier and bouncier. Make sure you're keeping the weight in the left heel so that there's not any pressure in the knee. And the next time the leg steps back, pause in the atlas twist. I'm sorry, I know you're twisting away from me. Take a breath, feel the warmth in the left leg, and then start to circle the arms over to the right, turning all 10 toes to the side, turning the feet all the way to the right, shift the weight into the right foot, generous bend in the right knee, float the back foot, just like we practiced on the ground um, in this position, and just feel the strength emanating up the back of the body and then slowly start to shift forward into the single leg balance with the right leg down and the left knee hovering. Pause there, take a couple of breaths. Notice the heart rate and then we'll prepare for Atlas Twist on the second side. So get bouncy in the right leg. Remember we want the right heel driving down, no pressure in the front of the knee. And then keeping that bounciness, step the left foot back, or keeping the toes down and the heel lifted. It's probably gonna be a pretty short stance, which is what we want, so we're nice and bouncy. And then use your exhale to sweep and wrap and spiral to the right. Simultaneously drop the left knee. That's gonna help you 
strengthen and integrate. And then shift the weight into the right foot and come into the single leg balance. Take a few of these pulses on your own and let's all practice moving a little slower so that if I said freeze, you could pause at any moment in the movement and have full control. And the next time you're in the Atlas Twist, pause there, breathe. And then sweep the arms, let the feet follow all the way to the other side. Shift the weight into the left heel. Float the hands back and let the right leg lift into a Virabhadrasana three prep pose. Take a couple of breaths here. And then slowly um, drop the toes. Turn into your Atlas Twist. And now we're going to put that all together. And so from the Atlas Twist, we shift into the single leg balance. From the single leg balance, we go back into Atlas Twist. And then we sweep all the way to the other side for Virabhadrasana 3. From Virabhadrasana 3, we drop the back toes, Atlas Twist. And then from Atlas Twist, single leg balance. So here's the secret. We always alternate with an Atlas Twist. So from the single leg balance, we're back to Atlas Twist. And then from Atlas Twist, we go all the way over to the other side, Virabhadrasana 3. And then back into Atlas Twist on that same side. Into our single leg balance. And I want you guys, once you've got the hang of the sequence, to start to explore this at your own pace. And it's okay if you mess up the order. There's really no right or wrong. If you're balancing, it means the next thing you're doing is an Atlas Twist. And then as you're swirling through space, try to feel your breath. Let your breath draw into your heart center. And see if you can be really centered even as all these big movements take place. And you can be present with both. The center of your being and the edges. Your inner life, and then your outer life. At any time you can pause, you can move a little slower, and really try to feel the sensations in your body and they're big movements, but see how centered and relaxed you can be. Let go of any worry of doing it right or thinking of what comes next. I've definitely messed up a bunch of times. And We'll take one more to each side. If you feel like holding Virabhadrasana 3, just to notice the strength that you've cultivated even through a very slow and smooth class, I invite you to explore that or add on anything that the body's craving. We did have an Urdha Chandrasana prep pose, so if the body's feeling like, ooh, I wanna see how that goes. Ah, beautiful, wow. Amazing. And once you feel like you've balanced it out, I don't even want to stop you. Everyone's like got their own cool thing happening. It's really beautiful. We'll all meet in a wide straddle can face me just for simplicity and we'll come to stillness for the first time in a little while. Let the awareness sink into the heart and 
notice any sense of energy flowing or even spiraling around you and see if you can feel that stimulation without being drawn out of your heart center and let the feet point out and well we're making our way down towards the mat um, hmm actually I changed my mind I want to do downward dog again so um, turn to your right and come to Tadasana um, imagine there's TheraBand a big thick rubber band around the ankle grab on and start to stretch it forward and up and there's a little bit of resistance and feel how the your body has to effort a little bit and unite as one nice opening through the front of the body and then let the resistance start to pull you forward hinging at the hips bend the knees bend the knees really deeply and start to sway the hips from side to side pawing the hands forward gently almost like bear walking into your downward facing dog again notice how you have to behave differently here than you might be used to and be okay with whatever shape you're in be compassionate and a little softer and then slowly lift the heels push into the balls of the feet and hollow out the body so you're rounding into a puffy plank drop your knees down so you're in cat pose so the spine is rounded and then push into the hands so the hips are traveling towards the heels push down into the knees slowly roll up one vertebra at a time start reaching the left hand forward up and open push down a little extra with the right knee and let's pause in a spiraling camel for one moment breathe soften through the elbows and then let the back arm continue the spiral turning forward and we'll repeat that on the second side so hands down knees up press into the hands to send the hips back into down dog lift the heels round forward drop the knees whenever it feels right and then send the hips back slowly rolling up pushing extra into the left knee so the right arm can circle up and back and we'll take a couple of these at our own pace traveling from a soft down dog into cat plank cat and then letting the momentum carry our hips back and then like a little spring they press forward letting us lift into our circling camel if you want to pause at any point in down dog or in camel or in cat please listen to your body those are all different movements right we've got a forward fold a back bend a twist so notice if the body's really enjoying or benefiting from one of those or maybe even something that i haven't offered and just like we practiced in our spiraling balance sequence see if you can stay at the center of all the movement right all the movement of your life that continues endlessly whether you want it to or not but you don't have to get caught up in the swirl you can observe it and you can absorb the energy of all of it and after you balance outside so for me that was spiraling to my right we'll all meet in either down dog or cat and then all the way back into bhaktasana it's up to you if you want if your body allows bring the knees together just to help the low back release um, but knees can be wide if that's more comfortable and then push down into the shins slowly rolling up one vertebra at a time let the hips come over to the left hand side and um, just like we did on our back 
curl the elbows in towards the knees so that protozoa pulse action and then push into the outside of the left leg let the whole body extend taking you into the spiral the arms can float wherever is comfortable i'm enjoying reaching them down and then you can stay there and breathe or you can continue to pulse like we did on our side so the pulsation can happen with the breath or it can happen with your movement. And then when you're ready for the second side, bring your hips onto the heels and sit them over to the other side. We start by curling in and then pushing down into the shin, slow motion, letting the whole body inflate and expand as you spiral to the right. Arms can come down to relax the shoulders or whatever the body wants. Can stay there and breathe or you can take a few pulses. To pulse here, I'm enjoying um, keeping my hands where they are, but sinking and deflating and coming out of the twist almost as if I was doing the protozoa pulse and then pushing down into the shins to expand and spiral. And then when you've completed your twist, kick the legs out so they're in front of you. And lift one sit bone at a time as if you were marching in place. Let one heel, the heel of the lifted sit bone reach. Letting the legs and hips create a lot of space. I really enjoy having a lot of space between my feet here, so you're welcome to try that. and then. Um, eventually find equal weight in both sits bones and if this feels tight on the low back you can tent the fingers behind you and you can lean back um, if it feels comfortable you can just pause in Dandasana just feeling the length of the back line of the body you can play with flexing the feet and bring your awareness to the lumbar curve that we've been focusing on so much in class and um, you can use your hands for tactile feedback. Just notice if you're able to find neutral and the musculature required to maintain that. And then 